What's up out there, everybody? This is your boy, comedian Marlon Ballard with the Love to Laugh podcast. I'm joined by a very special guest, the man, the, the baby, don't stop, Mr. Lil G Jenkins, man. Give it up for Lil G. Give it up for Lil G. Yeah, man. How you doing, brother? I'm doing wonderful, man. How you doing today? I'm doing great, man. I'm, I'm, it's, it's amazing to have you on the show. You're one of the most recognizable voices of, of R&B still to this day. You are a, a, a clown when I catch you live, bro. You are like one of the, you're a musician. You're an absolute musician, man. And I appreciate everything you've done for the, for the music industry. Thank you so much, man. It's an honor and a privilege, you know, and I'm, I'm thankful to God, to the most high, you know, that he's given me these talents and I'm still able to use them to this day. Yes, sir. That's what I'm talking about, man. First things first, though. Happy 28th anniversary, man, to, to lose control. How do you feel? Set of chocolate, everybody. Set of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, it, 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 it's, it's surreal. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's uplifting, man. It's, it's just a really happy occasion, you know, to be able to say, that I've had a 28 year career. Yes. Boys, you know, and we're still going, yes. you know, to this day. And our music is still re relevant, man. You know, that's, man, that's wow. It's, you it's, know? Sti hey, it's, it's still a baby boom out here. So y'all are definitely helping with the baby boom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're going to have a whole new generation coming about. <laughs> Especially when we put out this new music we're all talking about. So uh, that's that's I can't wait for that, bro. I can't wait for that. Twenty eight years, hey man. Did you feel old yet or no? Nah, man. I'm not doing it. I'm not <laughs> doing it. As a matter of fact, my next birthday, I'm going back for a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get younger. <laughs> oh man, that is man. You are uh, you are a light of the you are the light of the group. You, John John, you are a group of. Singers and comedians, I catch y'all live, man. Y'all are on stage clowning. You doing what you do, man. Y'all are, are performers. Like you can tell, it's not scripted. Y'all just go and whatever happens, happens, man. And that's what makes your shows enjoyable. Oh that's, man, so. it's our adrenaline, and we feed off our crowd. You know what I mean? So we're making y'all happy. It's gonna make us happy. Too. So <laughs> yes, we love it. So we love our fans, man. Like and crazy. And then, they love y'all, man. So lose control, man. So um, that a classic album from start to finish. Y'all have hits on there. Freak me, it had to be you, a girl, you for me. Like, what what are some of your favorite songs off that album? My favorite songs off the album. Uh, my first one is Lose Control. Okay. Um, um, I had to be you. One, one of them. my my personal uh, favorite. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, happy days. Yes, yes. A, a temple joint and uh, don't keep me waiting. And that's cause Uncle Gerald and uh, and Sean, you know, were on that piece with us. You know what I mean? So that's a beautiful experience. May they rest in peace. Love y'all, bro. R.I.P. Man, and and uh, uh, of course, yeah, Keith Sweat on the, you know, with helping y'all, you know, get to where y'all needed to be. And I told, I told John John this: you have one of the best Keith Sweat impersonations I've ever seen in my life. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yo, g g give us a little bit of Keith. Man, you try to get me caught up. <laughs> <laughs> You done did it already or, or, or unsung all that. So you might as well go and put it out there. <laughs> yeah, baby. Let me tell you something, baby. You, just tell you, you just need to do this like this, baby. I mean, trust me, baby. I mean, I ain't got these gold albums from platinum records on my wall for nothing. You know what I mean, baby? Come on, baby. <laughs> baby. <laughs> nah, nah. Yeah. Yo, how has he not choked you out yet? I want <laughs> Yo, <laughs> yo, he gonna do it. If he hear about it, he gonna get me back some kind of way. Oh man, that is <laughs> hilarious, man. You're hilarious, bro. All right, you you're originally from Nashville, Tennessee. How was it like growing up in Nashville, Tennessee, bro? 
Oh man, I had a great life, man. You know, I'm uh, the baby of seven, man. So, you know, I was fortunate enough, you know, to have all of the love and the upbringing from not only my mom and my grandmama, but my my brothers and sisters and everything. You know, one of my sisters was like my other mama. <laughs> uh, yep. So they, they spoiled me a little bit, especially when I, you know, when they found out I had the gift, you know, and all of that kind of stuff, you know, they treated me really special, man, you know, so I, I, I enjoyed my life in Nashville and, uh, you know, coming up, singing, you know, in the choir, the church choir, you know, singing with Bobby Jones, Bobby Jones gospel. Yes. And everything, uh, going through school, you know, and learning how to play my instruments and everything by ear, you know, and so I was asked a lot to be the musician for talent shows and to sing in talent shows and stuff through school, you know, and my acting and everything and stuff like that in, in, in high school and in college, you know, and um, I did opera in college actually too. Opera, how, how, did, how did that go? Oh, man, it was, it was great. That's what actually helped me to learn how to preserve my voice. You know, because I always remembered, you know, those techniques and stuff that I learned during uh, my college years. So that's and how so, all these uh, years y'all major. kept the same voice. Y'all still sound the same y'all did 30 years ago. So that's how you pretty much, okay, cheat code, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Message. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So uh, you said you had seven, you had seven siblings. So are you the only one that's a musician or do they also sing and play instruments? Yeah, you know, my mama was a songbird in the choir, you know, and before she passed, you know, I was able to be, you know, the choir, the uh, church musician and everything. So I was, you know, able to play behind my mama and everything. And my sisters, and a few of my sisters and brothers, they do sing as well, but nobody ever wanted to, you know, really do anything out side of it to the capacity that I have, you know, taken it on. So I feel like I got a lot of my stuff from them too. All, okay. all my family members in me being who I am today. Awesome. So you, you, you come up in the church. So um, pretty much you had a very religious background and then you go off and then you start talking about freak me. How did that go over well with the, <laughs> the, the Christian community if you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Man, <laughs> when Keith first started talking about doing this song, right? Y'all was church boys, right? We were like, "Man, we can't do that." I'm always gonna beat up my ass. What you talking about, man? We no, man, we no. Y'all trust me, man. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying, man? You know what I'm telling you, man. Just... <laughs> so we went back and forth for a minute, and then we just gave on in. So. So then I put in the mind frame, well, if I'm gonna do it, I better do it like I'm like it's my last time. <laughs> <laughs> so we went in, we put the tracks down, man, put the vocals down and everything, man. Song ended up being the number one. Man. Oh my God. Taking over Whitney Houston, rest her soul. Yes. You know, Janet Jackson and all of this kind of stuff, man. I'm like. This is crazy. So for as much backlash as we thought we were going to get, we didn't. Everybody was like, oh, man, congratulations. Hey, man, that's dope. That is, it, it, was just, uh, it was just a crazy situation. Now, you had I had some of the mothers at my home church, Emmanuel Missionary Baptist Church, Nashville, Tennessee. I had some of them, now, baby. There you <laughs> Now, baby, now you know where you come from, now, baby. Be careful about all that kind of stuff like that now. You know what I'm saying? I was like, yes, yes, mother. I'm, <laughs> I promise I'm, I'm going to stay grounded and stay rooted. And I'm gonna... <laughs> how, 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 did, how did your mom um, take that? Mama was ready. Mama was ready to go. She was like, oh, man, hey, get out there. Do your thing. I am proud of you. You know, she didn't give me no backlash about it. Well, you know, she already kind of knew where I was headed anyway, because 
while I was a church musician, I was like the gig king in Nashville because I played with a band called the Sioux City Band. And we used to play regularly at this place that had a lot of history in Nashville. It's called the Modern Era Club. Okay. I mean, people like James Brown had gone through that, Etta James, you know, I think Johnny Taylor has been in there a few times, you know, a lot of good R&B and soul artists and blues artists that come through this spot, you know, years and years ago. So it was a part of the spot. So I was in there on the weekends, Friday and Saturday night, doing my thing, you know, <laughs> playing guitar and stuff in church Sunday morning. Hallelujah. <laughs> Yo, so, it, it, it so not, I, had, I had a well-rounded, I had a well-rounded time in Nashville, so it was good. And that's good. So, so you went from y'all went from, you know, being hesitant to doing Freak Me, and then double down on it multiple times later on in your career, from meeting in my bedroom to, <laughs> to <laughs> don't rush. And I'm like, man, it, it, and it's classics. They're all classics. So, I mean, it ain't like y'all just putting out, you know, mediocre. Like these are hits. And y'all have enough to do a versus, which is why I'm surprised we haven't seen one yet. Is there one in the works? Well, everybody been waiting on Jodeci. Everybody That's says Silk and Jodeci would be the ultimate versus. Didn't. You know what I mean? So I'm hoping. I'm I'm, I'm hoping too. I, I don't. I mean, y'all y'all ran the nineties, bro. Like y'all from, from Forever My Lady to Lose Control to their. Freaking you to y'all's freak me is, man, it's vocals, vocals out of this world, man. Y'all are, y'all are, st- I'm, a, I'm a fan. I am. Um, So y'all did, y'all did lose control. So the album after that, y'all standing, y'all standing in the, uh, was that a cornfield? What was that? <laughs> oh, that was the great hit album. But yeah, uh, the one before that, it was the one that, it looked like a little soap bar. Like yes. a little silver yes. soap. Yes. With our oval logo, yeah, still, yeah, it, it was um. That's which 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 album was was your favorite one? Huh. <sighs> <laughs> I knew I was gonna get you with that one. I knew it. It's between tonight. Okay. Love session and um, the latest one that we have out, Quiet Storm. And I and I recently started listening to Quiet Storm. And I'm like, okay, they preparing this for something big, so I'm coming. So I'm I'm, I'm ready for whatever y'all got planned, y'all got brewing. Because I came to y'all's 25th anniversary show at at Cobb Energy. I was there. And when I when I say that was one of the it was one of the best shows I've been to, bro. Honestly. Wow. Thank you, man. One of the best shows, y'all. From the openers to y'all, I'm like, yo, this and y'all y'all are one of the few groups that are still touring from original members. Yes, five original members, bro. And because you know, you know these, know these 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 groups now they ain't they ain't like all the original members ain't there. And somebody I heard somebody say, yo. They said Drew Hill has so many members they could start a choir if they wanted to. <laughs> right. And now they're not even Drew Hill no more. It's like Cisco and play and them. <laughs> Cisco and them. <laughs> so so y'all, hey, y'all have all your original members. You ain't gotta ask, yo, where is so and so and all this? So it, yo, y'all, y'all got the game on lock, honestly. And the so, reason I the reason I play around, the reason I play around like that, you know, like 112. You know, it's 56 now. 56. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know and, and the reason I pray, play around like that is because really in my soul and in my heart, mm-hmm. you know, I love these boys, man. You know, oh, yeah. y'all are like family. We all came up in the rankings, man. I don't want to see that, you know, kind of thing going on with them, you know, and I was constantly trying to preach to them, you know, and stuff like that. But then, you know, you can only do so, yeah. and say so much but my ultimate situation my ultimate goal would be for everybody to just come back together and do what we do and put out a huge 90s boy band 
tour. Yes, I will be there. I'll be there. <laughs> front all of it. Yes. That would be stupid, wouldn't it? It would. It would. It would. That's that's my ultimate goal, man. So I'm 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 gonna stay on my path. I'm gonna I'm gonna stay beating it. You know, while I'm doing my solo project, John John doing his solo project. Mm -hmm. But when you say silk, boom, there it is. And, and we kind of got we, we got we something. That thing. I think because I was like, what's that, man? Huh? I said we we kind of got that? something like that in the '90s when it, when y'all did the BMU track for Jason's lyric when y'all had all the '90s R.B. singers on stage. That that's something kind of like we want to see that we do. Yes, yes. And y'all y'all were clowning during y'all y'all were clowning during that too. I saw you back there doing what you do. <laughs> Sexual chocolate. <laughs> oh man. Oh, that was that was a great experience, man. That was a, a great time. And and I think that's the last time like we actually seen something like that because um it's it's hella R and B singers now and like you barely see them, you know, together and trying to work with each other and all that. But y'all put y'all egos to the side. All the groups, most of the groups from the nineties came together and sang that song, sang the hell out of it. And yes. we haven't seen nothing like that since, man. So I'm leaving it to you. I'm like, yo, we don't get an R and B nineties tour. I'm blaming it on Lil G because his his words weren't strong enough to get them people in the same. <laughs> Oh, uh, I don't know. This little short fella over here is gonna try it though. I'm gonna go definitely go try it. <laughs> Man, so so not not only are you you know a, a boss singer, you also you know got into acting and doing plays. Um, what made you want to do that? Oh man, it's you know entertainment period has just been in me, you know, from a kid. Mm -hmm. You know, and, uh, I had the opportunity to do my first play in uh, college, I mean, in high school, my freshman year, it was called Hello, Dolly. And ever since then, I haven't looked back. You know, I ended up playing the lead role. And I had a, I had an old pretty fine senior <laughs> uh, 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 girl that played Dolly. So, you know, and I'm Horace Vandegilda, so she was my my number one, you know what I'm saying on that. So, uh, a freshman and a senior, come on now. You know, I was at the highlight of my life right there, boy. Ooh wee. <laughs> well, um, so, so you you went from doing that from those plays to to working, you know, on Tyler Perry stuff. Like, so you pretty much already had the the experience. So that was kind of easy for you, was it? Yeah, yeah, it was kind of easy. You know, of course, everybody's different. You know, and I had a great experience working with Tyler and learning, you know, from him, you know, got to got to do it his way. And I like that. You know what I'm saying? It gives you a lot of discipline, you know, okay. stuff like that and the things that you do. So, yeah. So before that, you know, I was working with Michael Matthews. And so I had, you know, built up, you know, pretty much a lot more experience. You know, because I started doing plays in 97. So mm -hmm. and by the time I got around to Tyler, I had a little bit more up under my sleeve. And so I just, you know, took his and just added to it, spread my wings. Let's go. <laughs> so are you are you um, can still, you know, looking to do plays and, you know, get in some movies or are you just focusing on music right now? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking to do that, too. Uh I don't want to hold myself back in any capacity. Um, you know, as soon as this young lady, this little 19 year old girl named Covita, Covita. Gets, out, gets out of the way. Covita. <laughs> I want hey. to put my belt out on Covita. Hey, y'all, y'all still been performing though, like not as much, but I seen y'all, y'all did something with Melvin Riley downtown in Atlanta. Yeah. And got rained out. Ah, uh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I thought it happened. We didn't even get to perform that night, man. So they're supposed to be uh, 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 redoing it, you know, at some point. 
who who got fired? Because somebody's supposed to check the weather when stuff like that's supposed to happen. So who who somebody had to get fired? They supposed to do that. Well, see what had happened was what, what happened. <laughs> I don't know who's responsible on that, and even if I did, I would do a uh, 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 pleading the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, come, who didn't check the weather for this? Like, yo, we I thought it happened. I was I was salty, I missed it. So now I feel like I have an opportunity to come now. So I'll be there. I don't care. I'll be there. I'll be there. Y'all gonna have six members that day. Well, you know, our ozone layer is so torn up, you don't never know. Eat eat really anyway. That's true. That is very true. So um so y'all, y'all are also working on a, um, a new Silk album, and you also are working on your um, G7 album. So um, G7, you know, I'm hearing great things about it. So how does G7 stand out from your first solo album, the other side? Um, this one is a lot more detailed, okay. well thought out, um, and also... I have the pleasure of being distributed by Universal Bungalow. Yeah, so you made that announcement. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that alone, along with the content, makes this, you know, because I got that push behind me now. You know, on the, the other side, I was doing that all by myself. You know, and I I received some success from it, you know what I mean? So, you know, I'm not knocking it. Was, it's a great album, and I still may do a a revamp of that album, yes. you know, after G7, you know, and bring those hits back out, too, because people are still asking for them, believe it or not. You know, they're like, you know, we love that song. We love this song. We love that song. So I'm going to, you know, keep it rotating, keep it circulating out there, you know just to keep the awareness about it. And then I'm going to hit them in the head with it again. But yeah, but this album, G7, like I said, G G is the seventh letter of the alphabet. I'm the seventh child. And seven is the number of completion. Look look at the stars aligning. Look at that. <laughs> and I'm calling it No Parole. And what, what made you go with No Parole? I'm sentenced to life in music. I'm not getting out. That's what I, hey, you got it. You you got it with that, man. No parole. He, he's here for life, y'all. Ain't no retirement coming up, no nothing. He's he, he's in here to the right. casket drops. I like that. I like that analogy. I hate when my favorite people be like, yeah, it's the last album. I'm done. I hate when I hear that. Like, if Silk ain't out there, then, you know, ain't no babies getting made. Y'all ain't being productive. So, <laughs> definitely. Um, right. Y'all, so um, like I, I'll tell you a couple of you know my favorite moments from y'all. Um, Chris Rock brought y'all out on the BET Awards a couple years back. How was that? Oh man, that was that was fire. That was fire. I, I wasn't expecting that. I'm like I'm like who are we about to bring out? And then I heard Freak Me. I was like oh okay okay. Okay, and then y'all came out, did y'all think? I wish it was longer. Like they gave y'all probably what, a couple minutes, but I'm like, nah, we need we need them to show out. We need them. Yeah, that was that was troop. Yep. Color me bad, right? Yes, and then y'all. And us, yeah. Yeah, so so did did to that help y'all? Bit. Did that help y'all get on uh, on board? Did that like bring some heat to y'all so y'all can start touring again? Yeah, it, it brought some heat. Most definitely. It brought some heat. And, uh, you know, we were already, you know, pretty much doing a lot of shows and stuff like that. But it kind of boosted it up a little bit more. And, you know, to look out in that audience and see Nick and people like Nicki Minaj and Snoop just going crazy <laughs> over our stuff, man. That Oh, boy, that was a highlight. It was great. It is. I, I vividly remember when, you know, if you and meeting in my bedroom came out, I wasn't supposed to be listening to it. I was I was in like second, third grade. I was living in Brunswick, Maine. My mom was military. So I remember wow. when that album came out and I just heard it everywhere. Meeting in my bedroom, if you um I think y'all had the return on there. Was that on that album? Return? 
Yep. yep. I remember hearing all that. And I'm like, yo, my mom's like, cover your ears. You can't listen to this. And I just hear you and John John hitting them high notes. Like, do y'all get in competitions where you like, bro, I can go higher than you on this? Or let me let me take this note. Do y'all get into them little squabbles? Like, no, nah, I want to take this note. <laughs> I doubt no, no, no. Never like that. We just compliment each other. Yeah. <laughs> Help each other out. Because because a lot of people think it's just like John John can only hit them notes. I'm like, no, that's G2. G can go up there. So so um um you there's a couple of uh, Apollo appearances y'all have that's on YouTube. Uh, y'all did lose control and you went into the crowd and you know serenaded a, a young lady up front, hit you, hit your high notes with your with your with y'all suits on. I'm like, yo, this if this isn't 90s. I don't know what it is, cause y'all had each color suit, <laughs> Crayola, y'all y'all was Crayola in there. <laughs> the pastel boys, <laughs> the the high tops, everything, and it's and it's something that um I forgot to bring up to y'all. Y'all have a great rendition of uh um the Whitney the Whitney song, uh, the greatest love of all. Greatest love of all. Greatest love of all, man, it, and. The, the the chemistry y'all have on that song, like what made y'all want to cover that song um, in a couple of performances? Well, in our practices and stuff like that, we used to do, you know, uh, uh, versions of like Commission, mm -hmm. you know, some of their songs. And uh, well, we actually did one um, in the movie Blank Man. I forgot about Blank Man. Wow. For the funeral scene, we did Cry On. Remember that? I, I, it's coming back to me now. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that would be how we practiced and practiced on harmonies and did vocal rehearsals and stuff like that. We just do one of those songs and then we came up with those renditions and then the Star Spangled Banner, you know, things like that, all of that. So we just created them, man. We just wanted to do something different, you know, instead of traditionally, you know, like they were, you know, something to set us apart, you know, from anybody else. So. Yeah, that's how we came. Yeah. Is there is there any um songs that y'all uh, that you or uh, the rest of the group passed on that actually went on to blow up that you was like, damn, why, why do we pass on that song? We should have did that one. Uh, I can't think of any right now. Okay, okay. Because a lot of the producers and stuff that work with us, they had stuff. They brought stuff that was like tailor made, you know, for us and uh. You know, I I produced, you know, and wrote on some things as well. John John wrote, Big G, you know, and Jim and Tim, you know, wrote on a few things too as well. So, you know, we kind of kept it in, you know, but when we went out, you know, they brought in stuff specific because they kind of like knew the nuances of our group. So, gotcha. Yeah, okay, so y'all pretty much kept everything, you know, silk only productions. Like we doing this, this is silk. We doing that. We don't need no outside type thing. And we, and we know, like, it's from everything from we're calling you to if you to um, sexy, excellent. Like, it it sounds like y'all. It don't sound like nobody else. And I don't think anybody else can sing them songs. But y'all, so y'all definitely kept mm -hmm. it, kept it, kept it G. All right. So um, I'm a, a lot of that was due to, you know, got to get a shout out to Daryl Delight Allenby. Daryl you know? Delight. Yeah, you dope, man. I appreciate what you did for these boys, man. Sexual chocolate. <laughs> you are a fool with that. Man. I gotta say thank you to Sylvia Rome because she brought him in with us, you know, on the on the Tonight album. And then he ended up doing uh the rest of the albums from then on tonight, uh the Love Session album. Yes. Uh, yeah, we tag teamed a lot on that album. And uh well, uh Love Session too. I mean uh uh tonight too. And uh He's also a part of the uh, Quiet Storm album. So him when, when y'all when got ready to do the Quiet Storm album, was it, you know, was it kind of weird, you know, get back in the studio? Because that was the first time y'all dropped the album in a long time. Right, right. No, it wasn't weird. It was just like, like soldiers. We stepped back in the, stepped back in the position. Let's ride. And uh, we started that one off with a uh, renowned producer, uh, he produced a lot of hits for Charlie Wilson and Johnny Gill, you know, et cetera, stuff like that. Wiley Morris. Why? Okay. Yeah. So, so I thought you said Wanye Morris. I'm like, Wanye producer y'all? Wiley Morris. 
Okay. Why Morris? Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Okay. Um, we can go ahead and um, get ready to wrap this up. I appreciate you. Um, since you know, and y'all really aren't touring like like y'all used to do the uh, what, what's the name? What what's what's the name? COVID. Covida. Co- do the Covida. Um, or is there anything that you're um you know learning new about yourself? Are you doing? Are you learning anything new? Uh, doing anything different? You hiking? You doing anything with your time now? Uh, yeah, it's, it's allowed me to be a lot more creative and, uh, you know, come up with new ideas, you know, things like that, you know, been doing little yard work, <laughs> little yard work, okay. <laughs> Get, you know, staying into being healthy, you know, doing the, the edelberries and the grapefruit and lemon juice and all of that kind of stuff, the cayenne peppers and all that kind of stuff, the lime juices, you know, just trying to keep myself young and keep myself, you know, in uh, intact so that when COVID finally does go uh, uh, six feet under, <laughs> then you know, I'll be ready to step out there, you know, to the highest capacity. Yeah. So, yeah. so because I know, I know when, once you get back on stage, I know you've been practicing those body rolls you've been doing on stage to the, the I, 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 I already know. <laughs> oh man, so I, I already know you y'all gonna be untouchable when y'all come back on stage. Y'all untouchable now, man. So I appreciate you, you know, doing this for me. Um, y'all look out for G seven. Also, G, tell them how to um, you know, find you on social media and everything. Okay, my social media, my IG is at Gary Lil G, G A R Y L I L G, and my Facebook is Gary Lil G. Jenkins and uh my Twitter is Gary Jenkins and my uh my web page is soon to come and uh it is called Lil Gary Jenkins dot com. Mm. Okay, got you, got you. Okay, so um I'm gonna don't hang up yet. I'm gonna wrap this up and then I'll um tell you how I'm gonna release all this in the future. So, um, okay. thank y'all so much. This has been Marlon Ballard with the Love to Laugh podcast. Lil G, my man, has been in here, you know, killing stuff and yelling sexual chocolate, telling us some stories, taking us down memory lane. So, thank y'all for tuning in. This has been the Love to Laugh podcast. Thank you, G. Okay.